16 to order. Cindy, roll call, please. Consent to cope. Here. Evans. Here. Martin. Here. Ready. Here. Burkhart. Here. I want to welcome everyone that we have in the uh, with us this evening. Um, uh, we'll have an opportunity under item that is on the agenda. We would ask not. Uh, if we have uh, individuals if we have anybody join us we will uh, that we will move on to the would you all lead us in the pledge of allegiance <laughs> We always go for the youngest person in the rooms. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the agenda approval. Jim, are there any changes to just to note to the city council that uh, item 7B, we tabled at the last meeting, so we'll need to untable that item when we get to it. It's item 7B on the non-consent agenda. B. B. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yep. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Thank you. On to public communications. Good evening. I'm Linda Evans, 7820 Northwest 100th Street, Johnston. And um, you do have my letter that I sent. I'm sure compliments of Cindy. Don't bother to you know hash over every word. However, um, I live across the street from Cross Haven. I think long before Cross Haven existed. Um, over the years, I've contacted both Johnston City Management, often Matt Greiner, and his predecessor. Um, and also Hubble, and they've been really good at addressing some concerns like weeds or mowing the sides of paths to give pets an area where uh, without being on the sidewalks. Um, tack again, tackling weeds and uh, trees. I, I talked to Matt not too long ago about uh, volunteer uh, trees, specifically cottonwoods that are now growing in that area. And Cottonwoods can be big, pretty trees, but they also, their roots will crack sidewalks, get into water lines, et cetera. So I ask that um, those cottonwoods be at least removed and taken back from the sidewalks. Uh, Matt did tell me that he's a little short on help, has been short on help, I think, in 2020, perhaps. And uh, so he put me in touch with Nolan Benzing, and Mr. Benzing and I talked and he told me that um, the HOA would tackle the cottonwoods. And I did told him I wanted my comments on the public record. So I sent him a copy of this letter as well. Another thing we talked about and not in a lot of detail, and this is a concern I have. Um, I've been walking in uh, the Crosshaven area for a lot, of, a lot of years. And there are people that are cutting paths from their backyard through the open areas, through the grasslands, through the plantings, get to the walking paths. It's convenient for them, but 
from my reading of the Hubble Covenants, it violates Article 3 of the Covenants because Article 3 says only the Cost Haven HOA is to maintain those open areas and that citizens, uh, homeowners who live there, don't have any right to put a path in or a, um, even you know cut a, um, a row or two with their mower in order to get to the walking trails. Um, <clears throat> and I think that certainly by doing that, and there's not a lot, there's maybe five houses out of all the hundreds of houses that I walk by in Crosshaven uh, that have done this, but it does set a precedent that you know somebody cuts a path and then somebody next to them cuts a path or somebody cuts a path and then down the road a little bit you see another path cut um and i and i do think it undercuts the intent of the conservation subdivision as established back in 2007 2008 because that was water you know the underlying reason was uh to uh, make the water stay where it's supposed to stay uh, instead of running down sidewalks and streets um so I, I feel really strongly that these residents should be warned or fined or lectured or educated that you can't do that. Um, it, again, it does violate the covenants. I have no doubt that they don't have a clue that it's a violation because there are pages and pages of those cross haven covenants and who reads the things? It's like reading the labels on batteries and stuff. You never read them. You just say, oh yes. And then you forget. So I don't know really what the answer is whether or not a, a letter to um, all of the residents. Um, I wasn't quite sure from Mr. Benzing and I, uh, our conversation, whether there is really an established group of homeowners who does something or whether we're whether they are still relying on Crosshaven. I didn't get a sense if there are some active people in that would go knock on their neighbor's door and say, you can't do this, it violates the covenants. But more than that, I think that all of the neighborhood should be educated. Um, and it, again, it's just an oversight. They haven't paid any attention. The print is small, um, new people come in and out, but I, it really bothers me to see that done. And I guess I have a vested interest in this. I was one of the people back in 07 and 08 who sat through endless meetings with Crosshaven and with the current council, almost nobody here except for Paula. Um, no, Tom. I dismissed it by about three or four years. Well, so, I mean, and we were arguing about the type of plantings, you know, does a milkweed, is a milkweed a good plant, is milkweed a bad plant? I mean, we, we were down to that sort, those sorts of arguments. So I have a vested interest, even though I don't area. Um, I, I believe that the paths, you know, the, again, five houses, and I said in my letter, you know, I'll save you some time, I'll give you the addresses, and you can, you know, but he ought to be contacted. However, uh, I would hope that you do not let the residents continue to chip away at what is really a pretty lovely subdivision and a pretty unique subdivision in the Johnston area as it has all these wildflowers and open areas and things that you just don't see anyplace else. Most subdivisions are manicured residents to the yard. And so this is pretty um, Since I wrote this letter, I have, and again, I've not spoken to either Matt Greiner um, or Mr. Benzing, um, I've noted that there is a patch of both thistles that is to, on the east edge of the park. And also there's plenty of Canadian thistles dotting uh, the walkways or near the walkways. Those are both invasive weeds per the Iowa code. Um, well, it's none of my business, but I'm not above chopping down both thistles. You know, I'll just take my take my 24D and, <laughs> and uh, whatever I have handy. And I've chopped them down over the years. Um, Canadians are a little different. They are, they're fast spreaders. Uh, fast spreaders, and I see them a lot. Again, they are both invasive weeds as defined by the Iowa Code. And there's a tree that uh, branch has fallen down, uh, again, on the path that would be Further to the north, 
closest to Lower Little Beaver Creek, and it has. Um, I don't know, can't imagine we had any wind, but uh, maybe it came down in that hailstorm, and uh, brushing the side of the path, and it needs. Oops. Matt could get a crew at least to do that, but I hope that um, Hubble and perhaps Hubble could work together and um, have you brought to before you sit down? Have you brought to Mr. Benzing? I mentioned it, I'm, but again, he has this letter. I made sure to CC him and CC Matt uh, when I, and I told him, I mean, I'm not going behind your back. I, I'm happy that Hubble has been so responsive and pretty darn good at getting out to tackle any number of problems, but we didn't talk um, at any length. We talked about the trees. We didn't talk at any length. as that it does but I'm um, go ahead probably going to say the same thing as <laughs> that I am you know we have very limited ability to enforce covenants yes, yes zero ability <laughs> very limited <laughs> well, zero. persuasive persuasive well, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not, not even sure I'm comfortable I mean that unfortunately a covenant is a contract between the homeowner and and it and is we and 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 while it doesn't ha hasn't happened here as of recently, we do often have people come to us to ask the city to engage. I know I've been and, here multiple and, times and heard and that discussion. We, and we we have a pretty pretty solid one hundred percent track record of not getting involved in those discussions. I know. I've heard of nuisance properties over the years. I've heard well, there's all a, sorts a new, of stuff. So the, the difference, Nuisance, but I've heard covenants too. I've heard so, covenants. so the difference is, is, and that's why I was looking reading through your letter is if there if there is something about those paths. That platting or any sort of city regulation that was established with Cross Haven, then certainly we should be looking into that. So that that's that that's I think certainly I would be willing to support us in looking at to from that standpoint, but from a covenant standpoint, that is not an issue. Well, I guess I would hope that again the city would just like me. I don't live there, but I have a vested interest in enjoying the path um, and not having it overrun. Now I know the city has a noxious weed ordinance, and so if there are bull thistles and Canadians sprouting up here and there. I get those spread here, there, and everywhere. And there is a sod farm directly to the east of Crosshaven Plat 7. I imagine that sod farmer is going to be too happy. So, I mean, you do have a noxious weed policy. And, and I understand. I, I've heard that argument before. But I also think that the city has a vested interest. So I would hope that perhaps Maybe Matt could reach out also to Mr. Bensinger. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm definitely on the outside. I don't have any, <clears throat> I don't own a home there. But I guess, Linda, what I was saying, I was trying to say was, I certainly don't have a problem or a concern with you. Covenants are a different thing, and and so so you you emphasize covenants, and I just wanted to, to you, as you were waiting for the city to send a letter on the covenant issue, you'll probably have to. Wait. Well, well, could I mean certainly I mean some input from the city, perhaps from I mean to Mr. Benzing, this concern, and hope that you will follow up from Hubble. I mean, I don't think that that would be overreaching. Lives up to what we had all hoped. I don't know, Matt. Do you do you have any comment? Have you have you had any conversation with? Thank you. 
I've not had any. I've not had any uh, conversation with Nolan Benzing. Um, I did talk with John here a little bit. They're going to go out and look at the tree limb that is up against the trail and, and get that removed. Um, and then we can we can look into our noxious weed policy as well and get that to the correct department and see if we can get that taken care of. Next item under public communication. Ostert, our new building official. On his first day, I wanted to make him stay late, so I tried to do a fence <laughs> meeting. Um, but uh, this is Adam uh, Ostert, our building official. Uh, today was his first day. Um, and so I just wanted to make an introduction. He comes from us, uh, comes to us from Ames after about a 10-year career there and prior career as a master electrician prior to that. So I'll let him say a few words, and I just want to make sure you all had met him, and you'll be seeing more of him as we move forward in the future. Uh, good evening. Um, Thank you for letting me speak. Uh, I do just want to say how excited I am to be here. Um, Johnston is a very wonderful community. Um, and it's, I'm excited to be part of the staff. Everyone's been so welcoming and inviting. Uh, and that environment, um, I think, is, is really key to the uh, department taking off and, and doing well. So uh, I, thank you for that. Thank you for letting me be a part of that. Um, as David said, I am originally from Eastern Iowa. I grew up there, um, settled, uh, I came to Iowa State and settled in the mid or in the center of Iowa. So um, became a commercial electrician, did my tenure. Uh, I was a building inspector, plans examiner, and then assistant building official. So kind of my work background in the construction. Um, met the staff today. They're wonderful staff. I look forward to it and I look forward to it. Welcome. Thank you. we are still under public communications is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the council on an item come forward and introduce uh, i'm cheryl long and i'm going to change my glasses so i can actually see what i'm um and i live at 8909 highland oaks drive and have been a 25-year resident Francis Rocky, 7033 Northwood Drive. Yes, Sorry, yes. didn't catch your name. Francis Rocky. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> excuse me if I read some of this because I want to make sure that I get my points in without spending too much time here. Um, I wrote to all of you on July 20th about the nasty politics that I saw cropping up in Johnston. And this really made me unhappy because we, we haven't had this that I've seen anyway. About it, but. Uh, to refresh everyone's memory, this was a text campaign against Mr. Burkhart. It implied that he or anyone that thinks like him is one of the far left and that he wants to defund the police and that we will have mayhem at the council meetings if he is elected. I want to assure you that I don't plan to bring any mayhem, even though I voted for Mr. Burkhart. So just so you know. Um, I, rem I realize that my concern seems like a dilemma because people have the right to express themselves. Um, but speech has a lot of consequences, and that kind of speech certainly does. We have a responsibility to call out vile, deceptive, rude speech. Um, silence just adds to the validity of that speech and to the lies and nastiness. And the true reason for free speech is to really encourage mark the marketplace of ideas to get us all in thinking about things. And rude speech shuts it down and divides us a lot. Just look at the turmoil caused by the rude sign on Beaver, and we can all know that we really don't want to see this Johnston. Civility is important because it makes difficult issues manageable. I saw the power of public officials early on uh, when public officials and citizens. I was a teenager in Spokane, Illinois. The Ku Klux Klan threatened to march in my town. So the officials made it clear that they were unwelcome. Guess what? 
they evaporated. Never heard from them again. So I'd like to ask if you as the mayor and you as council could use your free speech to speak ability because you've got the power to splot, to blunt this kind of behavior. And you also have a big stake in making legislating as trouble-free as possible by encouraging cordiality. That it's hard to get together on things as it is, <laughs> even if you're cordial about it. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if you could make a statement and publish in the Johnston News Centerfold where we normally read about updates about such things as you know garbage pickup. It just says something like, we as the mayor and the city council members of Johnson will refuse to support any candidate if we discover that their supporters use inaccurate, defamatory, or misleading language. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on this matter. I, I consider it very seriously. I think growing up in Skokie certainly made me realize what can happen when people don't stand up. Can you repeat the statement again, the final statement about what you would like us to put into the Well, newsletter? I'd like you to make a, um, a statement and publish it in the Johnson News. You know, we have that centerfold and basically it tells when you get pickup and all the rest of that stuff. I'd like a statement in that that goes to every Johnson resident. And I also would suggest that we send something about this statement to the Des Moines Register. They had, they were, they gave us lots of publicity about that sign on Beaver. I think that it would also be just as important for us to show, don't, we aren't a suburb that takes that lightly. And I just want you to reread what you're asking. Okay. So I would like to recommend that you use your free speech to speak out for civility and that you make a statement and publish it on the Johnson News Centerfold, where we normally read updates on such things as garbage pickup. This might also be of interest to the Des Moines Register, and that statement might read, we as the mayor and city council members of Johnson will refuse to support any candidate if we discover that their supporters use inaccurate, defamatory, or mid misleading language in any written or electronic communications in order to sway votes. I, I, I would see a problem with that because you cannot control your supporters in terms of what they might say. Then how do we, uh, then, then basically I'd be interested to hear from you what statement you think would be possible. I think the hard part about it is, is it's, each of us have, we're, we have a role as an individual citizen, official governmental a law in the state of Iowa that says as an official government body, we can make a statement like the statement you're wanting us to make. That would violate state law. What could you what could you say? I you know I I I certainly don't want you to violate the law. What I would like you to to do though is what the people in Skokie did. They were able to stand up and say don't come here. Don't do this. Maybe, you know, this is this is a time for talks to the city council. Right. Forth, right. Um, what we might or might not do, what we might or might not support. Right. Um, so I would encourage you to, you know, take up. What I will say to you is that, you know, I've been a an elected official here in Johnson. Early on in my career as an elected official, there was quite a bit of divisiveness in this community. West side, you know, and I have worked very hard through the time that I have an elected out to to the school guard and and the churches and you know every I know you sector. have because basically when I came, you're exactly right. That's when that yellow sheet was going around. My approach has been to you know try and bring that bring people together to create that unity to get you know to impose that you know to help, to help impose that civility in in our they, they didn't look for division but rather they were looking for ways 
And I think that's worked pretty effectively. Now, every once in a while, we, you know, we run into a little bit of a problem and we got to work through that and, you know, kind of, you know, kind of bring people back together again. But I think that just by, you know, you know, taking that approach of just, you know, we, we expect, we expect our community to respect each other, to be welcoming, to be civil with each other. And if there are differences of opinion, have that conversation. Well, and I think I think maybe we can have the conversation, but when we do not know where these things are coming from, and basically we this happening, we know what our our politics is like in other places. I have worked, and I I give you total credit because I was here twenty five years ago, and and that's exactly what was happening. And you know, horse needs a barn or whatever was going on and all those things were happening. That's a part of things, but this is, this can be happening on the other side. Um, this can be happening on every side. This isn't where we wanna be. And, 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 we, and we share, we share those right. views. And oh, I know, I know that you do. I know that you do, but I'm asking you to see if there's any way that you can work, make a statement so that people in the city know that the city council is as committed to this as my council and mayor is. This was just this big. In that case, it would have ended, I'm sorry, but probably in terrible destruction if they had tried to march in Skokie. And we're not there yet. Yeah, and I, and I think what we're trying to say is that I, I think there's things that we can do as individuals. Ability to do it in an official document. In that we are not allowed to, to take that. Can, can you make a statement that says we, we really want to encourage civility? And you, I, I'm trying to find, come where you, I'm, I'm trying to come toward you, not to get, a, not, and I hear but I, you I, going, I think civility is but I'm trying to, I'm trying to go toward you, not, but not to go I'm against you. I'm not even you. sure we could make a statement that says in the upcoming election, we encourage. No, people. I'm not even asking for that. I think, I think we have the sign on Bieber. Oh, okay, that, that I think the council may be trying to do something about. And stand up, and that's what I'm trying to do: is to see what can we do legally. And I know I, like my husband, I said, you know, ten reasons why it can't be done my way. Um, <laughs> but I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you that I do not want you doing anything that is against the law. What I am asking is that you figure out a way to make the point. This is really. All heard your concerns. Yep. Same goal okay. that you're trying to achieve. Okay. Would you let me know what you decide? Oh, certainly. Okay. Thank you very much. And I just want to say before you leave, I totally understand and agree with what you're the intent of why you came up. And and that my comment about how we couldn't say the wording that you had was specific to just those that kind I, of I, but the intent right. of what you're asking for i agree with that so i just wanted do. to say that before you sat down thank you Th thanks i think we all do thank you so much you, for listening you and i will be very interested to hear what you can do you're still under public communications is there anyone else Online, Cindy? No. On to public hearings, and we have one scheduled public hearing this evening. We expect a public hearing on the matter of adoption of plan specifications for the east of Merle Hay Road phase four bioretention plant.
cost to consider construction bids. Resolution 21 dash. Resolution 21 dash. We will open the public hearing. 31. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. On August 3rd, the city received bids for the East of Merle Hay Road Phase 4 bio retention planning project. Uh, two bids were received for the project. Um, after collecting the documents, the engineer evaluated the bid documents and it was discovered that the low bid had an irregularity with their bid, thus making the bidder non responsive. Uh, this was confirmed by Christine Stone at Allers Cooney Law Firm. Um, the lowest responsive bidder would then be Green Tech from Slater, Iowa at $73,720, uh, which is underneath the engineer's estimate of $74,606. Green Tech has performed work for the city. Um, previously, uh, they were Soil Tech. Um, which is currently doing work on our phase three East of Merle Hay bioretention planning project. So we do have some um, history with, with this uh, firm. Um, at this point, staff and the engineer would recommend uh, awarding the contract and be happy to answer. Background and history didn't highlight any of that. So. Not in, it, 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 as I read through the staff materials on it, I didn't see any mention. Helpful just in the future. To see. Okay. We'll add that to the staff report next time. Resolutions. Second. Councilmember Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Motion passed. 1 230. So Third. moved. Second. Councilmember Red, ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Resolution number 21 2. Councilmember Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. We on to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? An agenda. Second. Please. Councilmember Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. On to the non consent agenda. Item 7A. Consider approval of the third adopt and publish ordinance. Approximately 36.9. R2, PZK. No changes from previous reading. Questions for? Please. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Item 7B. We need a motion. So moved. Second. Councilmember Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans?
Uh, the city council did approve a site plan for all star concrete in April of, of 2020. And that site plan included city council acceptance of probably could remove this while I'm up here. Couldn't I, it might help hear things. Uh, it did include city council acceptance of recycled asphalt as a surface material um, for an equipment storage area. And that equipment storage area was uh, 6,716 square feet in size. And the property owner has come back and said, hey, I, you know, as I've, as I've worked toward completion of the site, I've determined I need a larger equipment storage area. And so at this point in time, he's asked to amend his site plan uh, to have recycled asphalt over a larger outdoor storage area of 14,213 square foot in size. So roughly we're, we're doubling the size of the um, previous uh, approved uh, outdoor storage area. And um, recycled asphalt, of course, is the issue here, um, not the outdoor storage. Outdoor storage is a use allowed by right. He's within the percentages of, of the total site area for outdoor storage area. Um, just recycled asphalt um, is, is uh, allowed on a case-by-case -case basis as determined by the city council, and that's why we're here tonight. Um, it, this was presented at the last meeting. Uh, my my uh, coworker, Clayton Ender, um, had presented the staff report, and there was some information I think he wasn't privy to that might have been helpful, um, that you might have been able to, to come to a conclusion on this matter. Um, some of the questions you had, um, did the applicant intend to pave that original 6,716 square foot area? Yes, it's already been paved. So this is not in addition to that previous area. Um, I guess uh, another question was what type of fencing will be used? If you look at the site plan, um, it does indicate that there will be a chain link fence of, uh, I believe, eight feet in height with the vinyl slats used. Um, for outdoor storage areas, we do require that they be screened from public view from um, adjacent properties and the right of way. And in the past, the council has accepted uh, the use of chain link fence with vinyl slats. And, and that's how this site plan was approved originally was to utilize chain link fence with vinyl slats. Um, the, one, the one difference here is that the outdoor storage area was originally on the north side of the building. <coughs> now it's moved to the east side of the building. And I don't know that I've got a pointer so I can indicate that. But yep, uh, Cindy's helping here to show that's where the outdoor storage area will be today. So there were con some concerns. Cindy, I think there's a page that shows some trees. There were some concerns that um, there was not enough um screening for this for this um outdoor storage area that it was too visible from the right of way and that um the council would encourage the applicant to provide some additional um evergreens on the south side of that storage area it looks like i'm oh, yep there they are right there um you can see there's a row of one two three four five green evergreen trees on the south side of that storage area to, area to help uh screen that outdoor storage from johnston drive so I do feel like the applicant's been responsive to your concerns, and I ho hope that uh, some of this additional information will help you arrive at a conclusion. Um, I do have the applicant here with us tonight if you should have some additional questions for him. <clears throat> I do have a question. Aaron, do you know how tall the blue spruce trees will be going in? I couldn't find that. Uh, that's not indicated on the site plan, but it would be appropriate if there's a, a height that you would like those trees to be. I think typically six feet is what we ask for for buffer areas. Um, if, if you want to insert that as an additional condition for approval, that might be appropriate. I think because the fence is eight foot tall, I would like to rem recommend that the trees be eight foot tall. Alex, do you have anything you want to comment on there? Do you have any concerns about that? And then the only other question I have, and it's not really a question, Aaron, it's like, I've noticed, um, and it's been mentioned in the staff report that we've been approving these screening plastic lattice. And it's, and basically the reasoning is we've improved the other one, so why don't we approve this one? And I would just wonder if that is, if we've truly looked into that. I mean, do we like the looks of this plastic lattice? Um, is this truly what the council would like to see? Because it seems to be coming up more and more. Um, I personally, I'm okay with plastic lattice, but as you say, the ordinance says the screen, the yard needs to be screened, and we're accepting pla plastic lattice. And I would prefer to see maybe 
screening of plastic lattice plus landscape. That would be the preferred way that I would see. Um, I would like to see us going forward in terms of screening for these outdoor storage areas. I don't find eight foot of uh, chain link fence with plastic lattice, especially on a, a very important road for us, which is Johnston Drive, all that attractive. And certainly we have an opportunity coming up um, on the 23rd. We, we're, we're currently, the, the Community Development Department is undergoing a, a code rewrite for our zoning ordinance. On the 23rd, you're going to have a joint meeting with our Planning and Zoning Commission. And if that's something that um, you would like to introduce as a possible change to the ordinance, I think that would be appropriate to introduce that at that time. And, um, and so certainly here, I think he's met the intent of what you're suggesting by, by providing those evergreens here. That, that would be something that I would like to have discussed and bookmark, let's just bookmark it now that I'm making this request in case I forget. Absolutely, thank you. And it's already on our list, just so you know, because it's right. been an thank issue that so we've much. struggled with, so. <laughs> I, I agree with, um, I just don't, I don't find the plastic lattice attractive at all, and maybe there's an alternative. Solid vinyl fence, but um, you know the, the code isn't very descriptive on what's required. Um, so it's been on a case by case basis that the council has reviewed this. So, yeah, I mean, and I think it's sort of trying to find the middle, the right balance right. of not putting a too large of a financial. I think the landscaping is a good kind of middle ground. So, and and it's hard at when we're in a council meeting where we're approving. Uh, this on the, you know, right here in front of us to then add landscape to it. It's not fair to them. Um, I'd like to see our ordinance just beefed up because, you know, our, we like to approve these plans. Um, I'd rather not have to have this discussion at this time, just have some more landscape. And I know Alex is anxious to get his site wrapped up. So your approval tonight, I think would be appreciated. <clears throat> Well, and I'd like to weigh in. I, I'm just grateful that uh, you were willing to accommodate this really non-code request. You met all of our code or and ordinance requests uh, prior to it. Uh, and uh, I think this demonstrates that not only do you have a commitment, not only to continue developing and development in Johnston, um, but, but certainly are willing to listen to us. And the least we can do is, is continue to listen to you and, and be a good steward of what you're doing for Johnston. So thank you for that very much. And thanks to the city staff for continuing to work with those uh, business owners. Do we have a motion to approve it? Approval. Second. Second, further discussion. Vote, please. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Passed. That's what you need. <laughs> Item 7C, first consideration of ordinance number 1059, amending chapter 69 to add section, add section prohibiting parking during certain hours on certain days. Good evening again. The design and construction of Northwest 62nd Avenue project uh, has added a continuous left turn lane as well as on street parking as indicated here on the map on both the south side and the north side. Primarily what we'll be looking at tonight is restricting parking just west of Lawson's west entrance. South side. Just the south side on that first segment of on-street parking. Uh, the former road was a rural uh, two-lane section with, without curb, which allowed the um, parents to utilize the shoulder for queuing during pickup and drop-off times. So knowing that, we, we tried to design this project with that on-street parking in mind to be utilized for that. Um, so the new section of street has curb and this on-street parking area, which is west of the entrance of Lawson, um, like I stated, was designed and intended to be utilized for parents dropping off and picking up their Boston Elementary. Um, this change to the parking regulations will prohibit parking in the on-street section. I believe it's like 335 feet that's to the west. Uh, Monday through Friday from 8 to 4. This, uh, this was kind of difficult because Johnston School District does have early out on Wednesdays, so we couldn't really go Monday
we, we kind of settled on um, just Monday. And due to the school year starting here on uh, Monday or next Monday that we uh, would request possibly waiving second and third reading. Matt? First consideration of ordinance. Second. Second discussion. Councilmember Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Councilmember Reddy? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Item 7D, consider the following items related to the final plot of Chesterfield Estates Plot 2, north of Northwest 78th Avenue between Northwest 104th and North. Five, approving a development agreement accepting cash payment. Parkland dedication of Chesterfield. Final plat for Chesterfield Estate, subdividing 20.2 lots. Um, okay, so the subject property is shown here on the um, on the display. It's uh, blue in color there on the display. It's uh, north of Northwest 78th Avenue and located between Northwest 104th and Northwest 107th Streets. And in January of this year, the City Council approved the preliminary plat for Chesterfield Estates Plat 2, and subsequently then the construction plans for the same plat. And at this time, uh, construction of the public improvements is nearly complete. Uh, the City has received all performance and maintenance bonds for the public improvements and received payment for the water and sewer district connection fees and the parkland dedication fees. Um, at this time, it would be appropriate to go ahead and approve the final plat for Chesterfield Estates Plat 2. Uh, tonight, I'm asking you to consider three resolutions. Um, the first is a development agreement agreeing to accept cash payment in lieu of parkland for Chesterfield Estates Plat 2, 21236, uh, that accepts the proposed stormwater management facilities maintenance agreement for the plat. And of course, the uh, final resolution, 21237, approves the final plat for Chesterfield Estates that subdivides approximately 20.3 acres into 28 single family lots. I did get uh, 33 in there. I, correct number of lots is 28. <clears throat> if you have any questions for me, I can answer those now. The developer, uh, Will Vanzi, is in the audience with us tonight if you should have any questions for him. <clears throat> Applicant? Uh, Mr. Vanzi, so I know obviously we this, uh, this project came up. Still intending to use that travel insurance route for how much longer and how is that sort of progressing? Right, right. Once the houses are built, obviously they'll use the tent is for construction vehicles. And our department has, to my knowledge, received no complaints. <clears throat> where, excuse me, where is the nearest park to this uh, area right now, or where is a planned park within this area? Uh, there's a park located in the Cross Haven subdivision across the street. Um, I believe there's maybe planned parkland 
immediately to the west of this when the when the west adjacent property develops. Um, the city of Grimes actually has a park in the southwest corner. <laughs> closest location yeah. is actually Grimes Park, which is just to the seventh there. Maybe you should introduce yourself to Aaron. So there is a Grimes Park within probably within a quarter mile of that location. Except uh, cash in lieu of parkland dedication for supplement existing parks. And the cross, there is a cross haven park, but it is yeah. ways away. Yeah, I mean, it's, across the street would be in our planned future growth area continues to extend north and west, and, and it might be appropriate to look for some additional park land as these west adjacent properties continue to develop. <clears throat> Move approval. Second. Senior vote, please. Councilmember Burker. Yes. Hope. Yes. Evans. Yes. Martin. Yes. Ready. Yes. Motion to approve resolution number 21 236. Second. Councilmember Cope. Yes. Evans. Martin. Yes. Ready. Burker. Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Item 7E, consider approval of claims one million three hundred and thirty five. Approval. Second. Second. Discussion? Councilmember Martin? Yes. Ready? Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes, I, got, I have several things to talk about this evening. Um, first of all, I want to mention uh, a little bit over a week ago, there was a project or a, an event held at uh, Terra Park called Silence, um, Project Silence No More, and it was a fundraising event and, and um, for the um, the, the group's uh, silence no more. Uh, through some miscommunication with their organizers and our staff, uh, we didn't realize that the intent was to serve alcohol at that event. And so at the very last minute, we realized that alcohol is going to be served. Actually, we found out really the, the day of the event. And so we, we did request that they not serve alcohol. We weren't sure who, whether, who their vendor was at the time and, and whether they had the appropriate permits to serve alcohol at the event. So. Uh, just want to let the council know that that they did not end up serving the alcohol at the event, although it was a very successful event. Uh, several of us went up and and witnessed the event. Um, and uh, what we've done since then is we had sort of a debriefing after the event. The mayor was involved, and police chief, and myself, and park director, and we talked about um, how we can better communicate and and what we need to do to upgrade our policies to. Uh, make sure that we're aware when when alcohol is going to be served at an event and we can take the appropriate um, action so that they get the approval through the alcoholic beverage division and also coming before the city council as well so i just wanted to let you know that there was a miscommunication with that event but i think we've uh, we, we've, we've got a process that we're working on that will help try to avoid those types of miscommunications in the future and i want to thank jim and figure out if we can pull a rabbit out of the hat to uh to address this big of a hurdle to to uh jump at the very last minute and i think that understood the extraordinary efforts that we were trying to go to to actually make it happen and and uh, and i want to Getting getting together afterwards, identifying what some of the issues were that that caused 
um, caused the miscommunication to begin with and going forward we won't have that that will not happen again so yeah, thank you, ma'am, for passing the document out. What you have before you today is the um, actually the meter reading for the splash pad. And it was asked at our last council meeting uh, how much water we pump through the splash pad. And you can see this is a daily uh, identifier of, of how much water is, is sent through the, the water system. Uh, the splash pad operates from 10 a.m. to um, 8 o'clock p.m every day of the week and so um, you can see where we get up close to 40,000 gallons a day um, that is basically the maximum amount those are some very hot days we had a lot of utilization uh, children and families throughout the whole day and you can see how it sort of adjusts I think a lot of that's related to temperature and whether there's rain events and those kinds of things which we haven't had a lot of this year but we wanted to share this information with the city council just to let you know what um, what the consumption is for the water at the water meter for the for the splash pad it's been very popular certainly we open it at the right time to get a lot of uh, uh, citizens and children uh, to utilize the facility but uh, uh, this at least gives you an idea of, of how much water we use for that uh, for the splash pad any questions I have to say I'm I'm kind of shocked that they got up that high because you know, I, I kind of saw those nozzle heads as kind of like a big lawn, uh, big uh, golf course turf spray head. Um, so I'm kind of amazed it got that, that that much volume went through all those heads. Yeah. Well, on those days, it's pretty much run 10 hours. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty consistent throughout the whole day. So you're right. But um, I, I will tell you, that, I mean, if you've been by here during the day, particularly those hot days, it's fantastic to see all the kids in there and then the families having um, lunch and, and picnics out in that area as well. It's been a real popular addition to our park system. A couple other things to talk about. Um, uh, just, I don't know if the council is aware, but uh, the, the uh, Greater Des Moines Partnership is gonna have their annual DC trip. Uh, it's September 22nd through the 24th. In the past, and this goes a long way back, we used to fund a council, uh, two council members to go on the trip. Uh, we, we stopped that many years ago, and since that time, we have had council members that have uh, participated in the trip, um, and usually either their company pays for it or, or sometimes they would pay for it out of their own pocket. But uh, I want to at least let the council members know that that trip is coming up. Um, whether this year uh, this is an issue or not, but uh, we... You know, we do have some federal issues that we want to talk about, particularly as it relates to uh, rural water associations and and uh, some of the federal law related to that. And so even though I, we probably aren't participating this year, I think as we have those types of issues come up, we need to uh, you know, make sure that we, we do take every opportunity to to communicate with our um, legislators and, and um, Congress people to, um, you know, on those uh, types of uh, issues that we want to work on with our, for our community. So just wanted to pass that information along. I don't know if anybody had privately decided to go on the trip, but that, that is coming up uh, September 22nd through the 24th. Uh, just a reminder, we have several events coming up. Um, this Saturday is the uh, Mayor's Run for the Trails, and that starts at Terra Park. And I know there's a, several different time frames because there's different events, but I believe it starts around 8 o'clock in the morning. So um, uh, that's always a popular event. I don't know, Paula, if you want to say anything more about that? or Oh, it, it's a great event. Uh, the proceeds from the... From the Always a fun time. Uh, Aaron already mentioned this, but on uh, Monday the 23rd, a week from tonight, there's a joint planning and zoning and city council meeting uh, to talk about the uh, code updates and, and uh, talk about some of the things we've identified. At least one item that, uh, that we want to make sure to address as the code is being updated. So just a reminder of that. And then uh, the December, or excuse me, December, August 28th will be the town center grand opening. A lot of events planned for that that day, beginning at three o'clock and going through about 10 o'clock in the evening. So we'll make sure as the schedule gets updated that the council members are all aware of that and, and uh, give you the latest information on that as it becomes available. 
I did want to talk about one uh, nuisance uh, abatement issue that we're dealing with right now. We have a, a company down on Northwest Beaver Drive that um, uh, part of their pro part of their business is that they um, take mulch, create mulch, and then I, I believe they sell it to construction sites to be able to put in temporary roads and accesses and those kinds of things. We had an issue a little bit over a week ago where the, the mulch pile caught on fire and our, our fire department went out and put out the, the, the flames related to the, the burning of the, um, of the mulch pile. We actually went down about six or seven times as it flared up and we were having some issues with that. Part of what's happening now, we, we did notify the, the property owners and our concern. We did issue a nuisance abatement order last Thursday or Friday and uh, with the intent that they would take corrective action. Um, I will tell you that, um, uh, that they have done some moving around of the, of the um, material to try to keep the, the flames from happening, but part of the issue is it's smoldering now and there's a lot of smoke down in the area and we are getting complaints from some of the other businesses in the area as well. We also um, notified uh, with some concerns about some air quality issues down there and so we did notify Polk County for their air quality program and they also have um, I think issued a, uh, an order to, to correct that as well. So got a couple things happening. I just want to at least let you know in the event you do get contacted by any of the businesses there, we, we are in, the, in an active nuisance abatement situation and uh, Polk County is also in, in active in this particular case. So um, we'll um, uh, just want to make sure you were aware of that. And I don't, does anybody else have anything this evening? I'd like to give council a brief update on our projects on Northwest 54th Avenue. The contractor had started paving the final segment of the concrete road um, that goes between roughly 89th and 91st, sorry, 93rd Street. And they'll be back to pave another section of it late this week, weather permitting, and then finish up their paving probably the, the following week with that. And they've got some trail and sidewalk to construct yet so that we can get that segment of the road reopened. Um, we are gonna have a busy week up on Beaver Drive as well with the overlay project. Um, currently, the contractor is slated to lay the final surface course on zone one through three, which is roughly from Merle Hay Road down to Coburn, which is half of the project. We're looking to get that buttoned up prior to school starting on the August 23rd. Um, they will also be in on Friday to do some more shouldering and intermediate and um, interlayer course on uh, zone four, which is roughly Coburn down to 51st or slightly past 51st. So all that week will be or all that work will be taking place this week on Beaver Drive. Um, we have gotten notifications out to the residents um, started that this evening as well as um, finishing up some of those in the morning that uh, to be expected delays up through there. We have scheduled that overlay to take place on between nine and three so that we can get folks out to work and as well as back home. So just wanted to let council know that as well. Um, and we've got a couple of spots around town, one in front of Timber Ridge, as well as 100th Street that have been, in, that have been um, under construction due to uh, either a subdivision or a city project. And we're working with the contractors to get those um, report before school starts so that we can be clear around the school areas when it does start next uh, next Monday. So just quick update, be happy to answer any questions on any other projects. I just miss it, Matt. It's open now. And has Northwest 62nd? Yes. <laughs> they they are they are doing some work there's a couple of uh, trail crossing ramps as well as um a couple of other uh places that uh, had some deficiencies or cracked panels that they are repairing um we are focusing on that segment there in front of lawson so that we'll have it completely opened and no construction happening there um, they'll, they'll have to do some seating and restoration but um, that won't interfere with traffic and then is to progress through and get the trail finished up south here along Merle Hay um, later this week as well. I'd just like to say that I've heard surprisingly very few complaints about the Northwest Beaver overlay project. Um, it, you know, not a lot of griping. And I will say too that um, 
part of that might be that my sister will drive across my lawn to get to the street <laughs> if she feels like she has to hold up at all for construction. So yeah, it, it, I'm that, happy to see this project progress so I can stop seeing my <laughs> sister drive across my lawn. Get rid of the tire tracks in your lawn. That's yeah. right. No, it, that, those projects are always a challenge when you have the residents that front and trying to keep access to those residents. So, but I, did, I just did want to alert council that there will be times because with this, with the next course, that surface course, there may be folks that are locked into their driveways or side streets for approximately an hour until they can get that surface rolled and cooled. Um, with the intermediate and inner layer, they can get on it within 15 to 20 minutes because there's a, if there is any scarring or surface marks, it does get covered up with that final layer. So a little bit more of a delay to be expected this week. What point will we have pedestrian trail sidewalk that starts at We've got all of the trail and sidewalk in with the project that so there is sidewalk that ends or that starts at 54th or just east of 54th and does connect up with the neighborhood to the east. I think it's a pretty significant. I like that throughout our. Especially to help with for, for traffic, uh, not for positive development that we need. Yep. We will do that. Yeah, it's it's a long time coming, and and there has been significant pedestrian traffic through there. So it'll be great to be able to see them use the sidewalk and instead of the shoulder of the road. Exactly. Any other staff comments? Uh, one more quick update. Uh, we've dealt with a couple of issues in the past few years that have involved potential for federal advocacy, and just wanted to make sure council is aware of the upcoming DC trip that the Greater Des Moines Partnership puts on annually. Um, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was out of the room talking to All Star Concrete. And, um, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> never mind. Other comments? Either. <laughs> I want to do a shout out to Matt. I've been getting them all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, Matt's done a heck of a job um, calling, stopping at their houses. So I think that I saw that the census numbers came out for Johnson. 4,000 people in population? Yes, I'm still trying to recover from vacation, so I haven't got a message out to you, but 24,100 something is my recollection. That's good. Yep, a little higher than I was expecting. Yeah, yeah, cool. No comment. Um, uh, I do have just a, uh, Teresa, I still have uh, two holds on my calendar for Wednesday, August uh, 25th and Thursday, the 26th. Okay. It's September now for that, uh, it's October now. Okay. Um, then my only other comment is a shout out to uh, John Schmidt. So, you know, the near and dear uh, beech tree that I love so much, uh, John, is going to work with um, the tree board, Mark Runkle. He's going to collect cuttings and hopefully get some, gather some seed from that beech tree. Donna said there's room in the greenhouse and they're going to try and grow a uh, prodigy. And I think it's a really good story. Again, you know, that unfortunately we have to cut down this tree, but that tree and, you know, it lived a long time. So it's, you know, a good seed stock for Johnston, and we're going to have those trees again. So 
wonderful. I think it's a really great story. Oh, and the other thing is, and I don't know what we're gonna do here, but I'm asking for anybody for ideas, that beech tree trunk shouldn't just be chopped up into mulch. Um, I know we don't have any more furniture projects, but is there something creative we can do with it? Or I don't know what, how do, how do you, do we auction it off to somebody who's going to make furniture out of it? How do we deal with that? If anybody has any ideas, I think it'd be great. All I have. I would add this evening is a lot of our staff were involved in fire department, police department, parks department, public works. Um, again, it was a very, very successful uh, seventh, seventh time they've been back and uh, there were over. Love this facility. They love, uh, you know, uh, coming back and, and really do appreciate. I heard a lot of compliments about the support that they've been. At a, a really, really neat event. Never been to it. Uh, I would encourage four year old kids out there swimming and running and, and riding their bicycles with training wheels on them. I mean, it's just, it's, it's incredible. Thanks to all of you for making it such a wonderful. Anything else? We're going to go to the order. If not, we are adjourned.